Well, I don't think he's ever left the China trade story. Wherever he's been around the world, he's, uh, he's always got his Twitter feed going. Um, what's he going to do next? I think he's going to continue to create that level of uncertainty, that level of defensive approach across the investor base. Um, you know, we heard Mnuchin saying it's not about protectionism. It is about protectionism, but at the end of the day, it's about Trump through JCPOA or through Chinese trade, trying to get the other parties back to the negotiating table to, with which to try and negotiate more favorable terms for the U.S., rather than to block and impose tariffs which, you know, make, a, make the U.S. sort of an isolated island, as it were. He's just trying to, um, you know, get back to the negotiating table. But that creates uncertainty, particularly at this time of year when liquidity is seasonally low, um, you're going to see sort of some outsized moves and reactions probably across the market. And in terms of the global growth story, how worried should we be? Because we just heard those comments from Christine Lagarde as well, as well as other finance ministers talking about yeah. this geopolitical risk. No, absolutely. And, you know, be it half a percent, be it less than half, be it, but whatever, it's going to have a negative impact on global growth over the course of the next 12 to 18 months. And we're seeing that already reflected, you know, in the curve. We're talking about the twos, tens being inverted as the, you know, the Fed looks to sort of continue its normalization process. But that longer term outlook for the for the yield curve is, is still fairly well anchored. If you look at the front end of the curve, though, we can argue that that recessionary risk is probably a little less, a little less acute. But yes, it's going to weigh on growth. It's going to create that uncertainty across risk assets. Um, it's just not helpful. Simon, good morning. Uh, does that imply that uh, the Fed needs to pause the tightening cycle in the fourth quarter, as uh, many have suggesting that they may do? Well, you know, as they've suggested they may do, and I've always been towards sort of the dovish end of sort of commentators on the, uh, on the Fed for the remainder of this year. But I think what is important, when the, when the Fed spoke last, you know, they've, they've very much stressed that they're data dependent. So if the data continues to strengthen, then yes, we can go once, possibly twice more by the end of the year. But, you know, if the, if the weight of the Twitter feeds, if you wish, um, starts to sort of impose itself on the global, the, the global growth outlook, then I think we'll start to scale back a little bit and there will be room for the, for the Fed to pour, certainly. It's all down to the data tree. Simon, let's talk about the data then, because we get uh, second quarter GDP uh, later on this week. Do we get a Goldilocks number or do we get a number that is consistent with uh, front loading or possibly even an economy that's overheating? Well, I think at the moment we're going to get something that hopefully the market's pricing in for, for, for something towards Goldilocks. And if we look at the underlying data that we've had, certainly on the jobs market and, uh, you know, the, the, the generic sort of growth picture, it's been very strong. So I think you know, we'll, we'll probably continue to play to that, uh, that narrative. Um, but there is obviously downside risk. But I think, you know, the, the effects of the global trade tensions, the geopolitical concerns are probably in the next 12 to 18 months rather than over the next, uh, over the next four to five days when, in terms of this, uh, this upcoming data. And Simon, what does this all mean for the Brexit negotiations? Because you're calling them a clear and present danger. Oh, absolutely. And if you listen to the news, I mean, one of the great things about being a Brit out here is the fact that we're Brits out here rather than back there. Um, the, the more they try to negotiate the Brexit terms with which they're going to leave the, the EU at the end of March next year, the more questions they seem to raise. Um, it is a clear and present danger. At the moment, we've got a very decisive split among the governing Conservative Party in the UK. And until they can sort of come together and, and agree on a path forward, then I think it's, it's, you know, we've heard the words chaotic, we've heard the words disastrous um, in terms of a no-deal Brexit coming up. Um, and that is the real risk at the moment. They need to, Mrs May, she's, you know, she's a poison chalice that she's inherited. I feel very sorry for her. Uh, Simon, no imminent, uh, pardon me, no imminent threat of investor capitulation despite the escalation in uh, the trade conflict and the risks to global growth. Uh, you're still relatively sanguine about the outlook. Can you tell us why? Yes, but I think, you know, if you listen to, you know, the Fed's, the Fed's rhetoric in terms of being data dependent, you listen to Mr Draghi, um, and obviously we get the ECB meeting on Thursday this week where, uh, you know, he's likely to talk more about the, uh, the tapering and the, the scaling back of his quantitative easing policies uh, by the end of the year. But net-net, they remain accommodative and open to, uh, you know, extending those policies should they need to. And I think in, in this sort of a yield environment with the... The central banks, while on a normalising path, have still got your back to a certain extent. There's no reason to expect capitulation. Yes, we're looking for a more defensive posturing across portfolio strategies. Yes, we're looking for uh, you know, a more conservative approach to risk, but uh, certainly no capitulation. It's more of a, a bottom-up approach to, to adding at these sort of levels, buying on dips um, rather than uh, running for the hills. Hey, everybody, it's Hadley Gamble from our new CNBC Middle East Bureau in Abu Dhabi. Thanks for stopping by. Now, to watch more, you can try one of the videos that just popped up on your screen. And don't forget to subscribe.